International rugby is back this weekend and it gets underway before the weekend even starts. It's a Friday game from Scotland. It's Scotland against Georgia. This weekend is chock a block full of rugby. You've got South African rugby, Premiership final. You've got, I mean, aside from the regular games, you've also got internationals within Italy, Ireland, France, Wales, England, and the Barbars. Spoiled for choice with rugby this weekend. But as I said, the first one to get us underway. It's Scotland, Georgia, 7.30 p.m. Friday from Murrayfield. That makes it 7.30 a.m. here in New Zealand, so Saturday morning, so not a bad one. Get up, have some brekkie, and uh, yeah, sit down and watch these two teams go at it. I'll go through the squads, their recent history, their predictions, and uh, you guys can let me know your thoughts on this one as well. So yeah, they haven't played each other a whole heck of a lot, if you've read the whiteboard. They've only played each other four times, and uh, Scotland has come out on top. All four times, uh, 2011 Rugby World Cup, 15 points to 6 being the closest of the games. After that, you know, 43-16 in 2016. And then uh, two Rugby World Cup warm-up games last year, 44-10 over in Georgia, 36-9 back in Scotland. So average score, 35 points to 10. It's been pretty comfortable for the Scots uh, over the Georgians in recent years. It's interesting they never played up until 2011. So it is kind of relatively recent years. Scotland's picked a pretty strong looking team as well. A couple of guys uh, look to make their debuts as well, which is always a special moment. Uh, they've got Sutherland Brown, who is captain, and Xander Fagerson in the front row. Now, I know the Georgians are renowned for their scrummaging, but Sutherland and Fagerson have been hella good. Uh, in the, the old scrummaging department in the Six Nations. These guys were absolutely bossing it. And it's been a while, but the Rugby World Cup, I seem to remember the Georgians not quite bossing it as maybe we had expected them to do. So how the battle up front goes, it's always going to be a question when the Georgians play, but when you've got Sutherland and Vegas in, in the front row as well, uh, they're always going to be one to watch to see if they can get dominance in that area. Toulis and Cummings in the second row. Uh, Richie Watson... And Matt Ferguson make out the back row. Richie and Watson plus other seems to be Townsend's kind of choices because Richie and Watson seem to be maybe a cut above. But the number eight jersey has not really seemingly been absolutely set in stone by anyone as yet. Uh, Price and Hastings are your 19 combo. So there's no Finn Russell in the number 10 jersey. However, he is on the bench in the number 23 jersey. And interestingly, I guess the Scottish are, are picking a big battle up front because they've only gone with two back reserves. They've got George Horn and Finn Russell covering the entire back line. So, yeah. Expect some, some good battles up front. Uh, Lang and Harris is the midfield combo. Interesting one. Uh, I'll be keen to see how Lang goes. Uh, Kinghorn is at 15. Graham's at 14. And you got Duhan van der Merwe coming on for his debut in the 11 jersey. Now that's a proper big man, little man with Graham and, and Duhan. And I do really like that. So congrats to him for getting his debut. Uh, and Kinghorn is a assured guy at fullback as well. So pretty keen to see how these guys go. Especially when you look at the Georgian pack. Because the Georgians, for the most part, all their Fords seemingly are all professional guys playing in France for the most part or you know either in the, the, the top 14 or the D2 but the backs a lot of them not so much they seem to play locally whereas like you know Graham Duan van der Merwe King Owen, these guys are just electric so how well they can contain the Scottish backs will be one to watch uh the bench you got McAnally Kibble who will also get his debut uh Bergen is the front row Harley and Hanning plus Dupria, other Ford reserves, and then Horn and Russell, as I mentioned. So thank goodness Finn Russell's back in the fold. There's no Stuart Hogg, but you do have Finn Russell. So I'm so kind of surprised Russell's available, I guess, given he played that, that final recently with Racing 92. But I guess the top 14's back underway, so it's kind of a weird one where nobody's really getting a rest after a final. Uh, for the Georgians... There's a lot of familiar faces from uh, from the Rugby World Cup. They're a team that I certainly don't get to watch anywhere near as enough, and I don't watch enough Pro, Pro 14 to be as familiar with these guys as I should. Uh, Narashvili is your loose head prop, plays for Montpellier. Uh, he's a kind of um, 
pretty familiar face, I guess, in that Georgian lineup. Jabba Brigvadza. We've seen him loads here in Super Rugby because he played for the Sunwolves for for a few years. So he's uh, a pretty steady hand then in, this, uh, in the number two jersey. And then Kolosh Vili is the other guy. I think he might be new. I don't remember seeing his name, but I stand to be corrected. Uh, Cheshvili Vili and Kariko Vili are the locks. Kardiko doesn't seem that familiar either. I think I've seen the other fella before. Uh, the back row is much more familiar. Uh, Giorgadza is your number six. He was at the World Cup. Becca Gorgadza is your number eight. Now, some people in the past when I've done Georgian videos, and again, I'm not that familiar with the Georgians well, so I don't blame anyone. But I remember once I did a video and I picked like Becca Gorgadza as like one of the top Georgian players, and they were saying it's Gorgadza, not Gorgadza. Different dude. If you're thinking of Mamuka, the old fella, different guy from Becca. Becca Gorgadza is a phenomenal youngish, I think he's like, what, 24? Maybe a bit older. Uh, loose forward, he was an absolute star at the Rugby World Cup. He is like one of the Georgian names when I look at the team sheet and go, I know who that guy is, because he's really good. So, yeah, uh, they've got some damn good Lucys. Uh, and Sag Hinadza is your number seven. Lobjanidza is your number nine. I think he was the main guy for the Rugby World Cup, so kind of no changes there. Abjanadza is number 10. Sharakadza is 12, and he's captain. He's been around the blocks. He's been with the Georgian team for a long time. And uh, Tapladza is 13. I can't remember that much about him. Torua is the left wing. He is, again, one of the backs that I absolutely recognize from the Georgian team. He scored a, a couple of tries at the Rugby World Cup. Uh... Tabutsadza is the right wing and Matiashvili is 15. Poof, I need to watch more Georgian rugby. That is one thing I note from looking at this side. But as I said, not that I can add a whole bunch of insights. Toto is a pretty nice little uh, winger. He's pretty quick. Uh, Beka Gorgadza is one of the best Lucys you'll see around no matter what team you're watching. Uh, the Georgian forwards, as I mentioned, for the most part, seem to be professional rugby players, whereas the backs... Maybe not quite so much, but yeah. Uh, predictions for this one. Obviously, Scotland are the favourites. Big time favourites. I've just dropped my pen. Uh, but TAB over here in New Zealand, which is our bookmaker, have got the Scots winning it by 24 points. Uh, rugby forecast algorithm has got a similar story with the Scots being predicted to win by 22 points. So they should be pretty comfortable favourites. It is essentially a friendly, so... There's not a whole lot on the line, but we haven't seen either of these teams play for quite some time. So let's just be thankful that we get to see international rugby other than New Zealand and Australia getting underway. Plus Ireland and Italy, plus Wales and France, plus the Barbars in England if the COVID disruptions doesn't stop that game from going ahead. But yeah, happy days. Uh, if you haven't figured out how to watch the game, uh, it's on like Sky Sport New Zealand, it's on ITV. It's on KO in Australia. It's on Supersport, I believe. So most of your usual broadcasters. I haven't checked the SPN. I don't think it's on ESPN, but uh, either way, it's on ITV, which is free if you're in the UK. So I'll, I'll have a word about that one in just a second. Uh, there's quite a few games on ITV this weekend, so it's a pretty useful one. But uh, anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts on this one. How do you think it's going to go? Do you think 20-odd points for the Scots, or do you think the Georgians might bring it a bit closer? Both sides may be a bit rusty, so we'll have to wait and see. But um, yeah, you guys have any thoughts, and I'll talk to you soon. See you later. All right, guys, so if you do not know how you're going to watch it, this is the one I'm recommending, ITV. This is the same one we used for the Rugby World Cup, if you remember rightly. You can see in their guide, you got international rugby here. This is the Scotland game, 7 o'clock on Friday. Then you got like Six Nations. This is the Ireland against Italy game. I think later in the day, they've also got, uh, I believe, Wales and France down here. So there's a whole bunch of rugby on ITV. The great thing about ITV is it's free. So you can... Uh, essentially watch stuff live and on demand using the ITV uh, player. I'll just see if I can find some sports. Can you just search sports? Find something to play? Maybe we just go category sports. Uh, but yeah, sport. 
They don't leave the episodes up for like ever, but it's usually up for about a month from memory. Now it's a while since I've used this one, but essentially if you are wanting to watch these, their site's free. It's got ads, but if you're outside the UK, as long as you're connected using a VPN to the UK, you can essentially log in and watch the uh, watch the stuff for free live and on demand. You do have to watch some ads. That's kind of the only the only drawback. So yeah, um, I'll put a link for ExpressVPN in the description. That's the one that uh, that works for me. So when I want to watch the ITV stuff, I just log into ExpressVPN, connect to the UK. Uh, and jump on to ITV to watch the games. Like for me, the um, the Ireland game is going to be on at like 3.30 in the morning. And I don't have... Um, this is what I mean about the ads. I don't have like the the recording show here on in New Zealand to like watch the games recorded. Because you've got to pay an extra fee for that. I've already got a VPN, so just jump on to ITV. So yeah, you do have to sign in to create an account... From memory, you may need to Google a UK postcode, but it's pretty simple. And then you jump on and uh, and watch the games. But yeah, this is how we're watching the games this weekend. If you haven't got it sorted, it's a, it's a pretty sweet way to get it done. Link in the description for ExpressVPN. That's the one I'm using. That's the one that works for me. But uh, yeah, hope that helps, guys. And I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.